Welcome back to the channel Gadgets for Gentlemen. I just got back from the post office and picked up this parcel. This comes from Singapore. Let's have a closer look. I think I ordered this article at creationwatches.com but I will also um, link to uh, this item in my Amazon storefront. On the wrist the uh, Glycine Combat Sub and I wear it here on this beautiful uh, sand colored NATO strap absolutely still uh, love this watch anyways let's continue here very typical of creation watches your watches don't come in the original watch box but come in this little red uh, watch pouch and they come with a very generic uh, paper watch box oh my god this is insane here we have it finally again in the collection. We have the Seiko SKX-009J. This is the made in Japan version. I purchased this, for, this watch for about uh, 200 euros. And then we have that um, added uh, 26 euros of import duties. Uh, this is just a very quick, super quick unboxing video. And I will make definitely much more B-roll content um, in due time because that watch uh, really deserves it it comes with this little tag and it reads Seiko 5 21 jewels referring to the automatic movement made in Japan so this is the J version and I did own a K version in the past here on the dial we can read uh, 21 jewels that text is missing on the K versions and here, uh, to the left of the 6 o'clock position, between 6 and 7, it reads Made in Japan. And that, those little things are things that make this watch really uh, unique. Yeah, so I purchased this um, in the end of last year, 20th, 20th, 23rd of December. And it took exactly, I would say, two weeks to arrive. Yeah, I think that's fair to say by Singapore Post um, Airmail. So what we have here is like one of the most iconic Seiko dive watches uh, ever created. This is the uh, 009. There's also a 007, which I owned in the past. Here it comes with this, um, yeah, the simple rubber strap or, or silicon strap. I'm not even sure if this real rubber that starts at 2020. 22 uh, millimeters here at the lugs and as you can see it curves down a bit tapers down here Seiko signed and here we have that logo um, that um, that is I think it's inspired by the artwork of a Japanese painter um, we have one adjustable keeper here uh, a bit of a brushed clasp looks more gray than silver and let's have a closer look at the case back. There's some plastic here. Let's get it out of the way. Yeah, there we go. So again, um, I did not do a lot of research into this artwork, but it is um, something I really adore uh, on this case back. And I think it's so much more intriguing than the uh, Orient Ray uh, case back, for example. But even uh, compared to this Glycine, I think <laughs> truly it looks really nice with the seals and that um, uh, Triton there and the logo. But compare it to this one, this, this, the way it's like etched into it. I don't know if that's the correct word. This looks more like a laser. This is just like a beautiful, like 3D effect. Okay, the basics, stainless steel, Seiko 7S26, that is the movement, scuba divers, uh, Japan. We have a screw down crown, non-signed. The crown is positioned at the four o'clock, which is very different to most watches that have the crown at the uh, three o'clock. We have a Pepsi colored diving bezel with a very good grip that you can see here, like it's very, easy to grab, it's quite uh, tall. Like if you compare it, for example, to the Glycine, you can see that this bezel is very 
um, it's not that high, you know, it's like very thin. Um, I don't say this is a bad bezel, but I prefer these kind of bezels that really stand out um, and are so easy to grip, even when you're wearing gloves. And bezel action is like super easy. And like so far, I think I might have a SKX that is properly aligned. Let me know what you think. I've had uh, some problems with um, with the 007, I believe, in the past, where it was so misaligned that it got me like sick. But here, I think everything is in one line, but I have to look at it in more detail. So we have, I think we have a 120 click bezel here, unidirectional, and it does seem to align. We have a blue dowel, I think it's like mud blue, very dark blue actually. We have a, a date and we have a day, we have these very typical hands with a uh, lollipop second hand with the pip at the, at the back side of it. A printed dowel, applied loom. Oh no, I think it looks beautiful. And we're dealing here, I believe 42, I need to... Um, do a follow-up video where I will literally measure every inch of this watch. Lock to lock is not too bad. Definitely, I think it's much uh, shorter than the glycine. Although the glycine uh, really curves down, as you can see here, and it's quite thin. This lock to lock distance is quite long. And this lock to lock is like really short. I think it was 44, if I'm not mistaken. I think the glycine is uh, almost 50, I believe. Uh, again, 22, I think a diameter again, 42, which is similar to the uh, glycine. I think it's also 42. On top, we have Hardlex, which is a hardened mineral crystal. Unsigned crown, screw down. Very nice crown guards. Let me unscrew it all the way and just see what's happening here. Movement does not allow for hacking or hand winding. So let's adjust the time a little bit. So there we have it. Already we can see the date changing at a quarter to midnight. And the date changed here at about eight to midnight. Now the day is slowly changing after midnight. We have Arabic second language, as you can see here. And then moving to about 4 a.m we are back to English. So that is a Monday 28. So now we have um, Tuesday the 5th. So I go to the first position and here when I uh, rotate downwards, we can go to days of the week. So I said Tuesday. There we go. And moving upwards, we go to the date. So the 5th. So now we have Tuesday the 5th, 6 a.m. So now I put the crown back to the second position and go to midday. And now it's about uh, 3 p.m. There we go. I screw back the crown, I pop it back in and then I screw it down like so. And that will keep the water out really nice grip so quickly let's throw it on the wrist and uh, excuse me for the poor image quality but here it's already uh, yeah winter it's getting dark already now early afternoon but that gives us some uh, excuse to demonstrate the loom there we go this is still like in a little bit of daylight but we can see loom here on the bezel we can see loom on the hour markers the back of the seconds, uh, minute and hour, and I think that looks absolutely amazing. And I believe that the loom is like so much stronger than the glycine. And this is not to bash the glycine because I really love the glycine, but I think the 
Seiko is more legible when it comes to the loom. Yep. Well, anyway, judge for yourself, but I think the loom on the Seiko is uh, much better and lasts longer. Anyways, let's pop it on the wrist. I'm actually quite a fan of this uh, strap. It's, uh, it's cheap, but it's strong. So there we have it on a 6.3 inches wrist. And I think this is just such a beautiful, fun watch. I will really like this uh, bezel action. I use it a lot during the day to time uh, study sessions and so on and so forth. There we have it. So easy to grip. Really like the colors of this watch. And these watches are getting less and less easy to uh, get a hold on. So I wouldn't be surprised if this watch was going to uh, raise in value uh, quite a bit real soon. So definitely if you can get your hands on the J version, uh, there's a link uh, also to, the, um, to my Amazon uh, store. And uh, just make sure you get yourself the J version. I think it's worth the little extra over the K version. And this is what it looks like. Plenty of uh, videos to come soon. Uh, of course, daylight shots, sunlight, uh, different straps, maybe also a um, metal bracelet with a um, solid end link. Who knows? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and see you soon. Mm -hmm.